Here's a fun problem. The Fibonacci sequence is defined by 1 equals to a1 equals to a2 and an is equal to an minus 1 plus an minus 2 for n greater than 2. We need to find an plus 1 by an for n equals to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, pause the video, give this a try. Okay, so if you feel stuck, if you feel like this question is talking to you in a very mathy language, don't worry about it, we'll break this down. In most of these questions, whenever we have to find a sequence or terms of a sequence, we have to look at two things. Do we know where the sequence gets started? Do we know the first term? And do we know the pattern that the sequence is following? Are we given a pattern or a rule? So if you look at these two things, the first one says 1 equals to a1 equals to a2. So we have the a1 right here, that's our first term. So we actually know our first term. And not just the first term, we actually know first and second term. In fact, both of them are equal. So we know where it gets started. And this second equation, the pattern or the rule can be found here. This is actually giving us the formula for the general term a n. We can get the other terms by plugging in values of n. But we have to be careful, we can only put in values of n which are greater than 2. And I think that makes sense. For n equals to 1 and 2, we are already given the value. So this is the formula that we'll use for values greater than 2. So let's put this down. We know the first term, which is 1. The second term is also 1. That's a1 and a2. And for the rest three terms, a3, a4, and a5, we can use this formula. So let's try doing this. Let's put n equals to 3 and see what we get. So when we put n equals to 3, we get a3 equals to a n minus 1 and for n we are putting 3. So a3 minus 1 plus a3 minus 2. Let's see what we have. a3 is equals to a3 minus 1 becomes 2 and 3 minus 2 becomes 1. Interesting. So they're saying that the third term is equal to the sum of the second term and the first term. That's great news for us because we already know the second term and first term. We can use the values of the second term and the first term from here and say that a3 is equals to 1 plus 1. That means a3 equals to 2. Good job. We have our next term a3. Now we can do the same thing again. We can put in n equals to 4. a4 is equals to a4 minus 1 plus a4 minus 2. This gives us a4 equals to the third term plus the second term. So this means our fourth term is equal to this third term plus the second term. That's 1 plus 2, that's 3. Let's write that down. 2 plus 1, a4 becomes 3. Awesome. Now we can write all these steps down, but we can also notice something interesting. Notice this second step here. a3 equals to a2 plus a1 and a4 equals to a3 plus a2. The next term is always the sum of the previous two terms. So we don't have to write all of this. We can just add the previous two terms. 2 plus 3 should give us 5. That's our fifth term. In fact, we can keep going. We can find the next three terms. Do you want to give this a try? Okay, so the sixth term is 3 plus 5, that's 8. Next one is 5 plus 8, 13. And the next one is 8 plus 13, 21. Much easier, right? All right, so now that we have cracked the code and we have found the first few terms, let's figure out what the question is asking for us to do. So we are asked a n plus 1 by a n that's actually the ratio of the next term and the current term. So whatever value you'll put for n, you'll have to put the next value for a n plus 1. This will give us the ratio of the next term and the current term, which means for n equals to 1, we have a2 by a1, which is the second term by first term. The next one will be a3 by a2. Then we have a4 by a3, then a5 by a4, and then a6 by a5. I'm glad that we also figured out the sixth term. We need it here. So now it's just a matter of plugging these values and finding the ratios. You can wrap this up. Let's do this together. So second and first term are same. They're one and one. So the ratio is one. Third term by second term. That's two by one. That's actually equal to two. Fourth by third. That's three by two. That's 1.5. Fifth by fourth. That's five by three. Five by three is 1.6 repeating. That's 1.6666. 6 by 5, that's 8 by 5. So 8 by 5 is exactly 1.6. Okay. 
we're done with the problem we have figured out these values but i want you to stay with this and think about the pattern that this ratio is giving us can you see something the first value was 1 then the value increased to 2 then it decreased to 1.5 then it increased slightly to 1.66 then it decreased even more slightly to 1.6 so seems like the value is settling down if we keep going the value will be between 1.66 and 1.6 somewhere between these two values turns out that this value actually settles down and it's called the golden ratio now try searching for the golden ratio or the fibonacci sequence on the internet and see what you get happy exploring